If you love liberty, declare your independence by signing the Shire Society Declaration at ShireSociety.com. This is case 2017-0116. <clears throat> State of New Hampshire versus Heidi C. Lilly. State of New Hampshire versus Kia Sinclair. State of New Hampshire versus Ginger M. Piero. Thank you. My name is Dan Hines, representing the appellants. May it please the court. And I've asked for a three minutes rebuttal. In this case, the city of Laconia has criminalized being female. That's what it comes down to. I'm not aware of any criminal statute in New Hampshire where an element of the offense that the state must prove is that the defendant is a certain sex. I suggest that's unconstitutional and really immoral. In this case, the equal protection is certainly triggered. I would suggest it was plain error by the district court to say equal protection is not triggered because all women are treated equally and all men are treated equally. That just eviscerates the entire equal protection argument. The US Supreme Court, years ago in Loving, rejected that argument outright. If we were to allow that argument to proceed, then the state could prohibit black people from using white or water fountains. They could prohibit women from attending schools because they're treating all women the same and all men the same. Can you just tell me, counsel, uh, one of the, I mean, I tend to think you're absolutely right on that point. I, I don't have any doubt about that. But what, as opposed to the other things you've just talked about, you know, Afri uh, black versus white, uh, uh, male versus female in, in various other contexts, What's the disadvantage here? In other words, the, 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 uh, it, yes, it's true that the law would say that a male uh, must, you know, uh, or, I'm sorry, both male and female must cover up sort of the pubic area, but only a female must cover up the breasts. Right. What's the disadvantage? the disadvantage? Give me some practical, in other words, in practical everyday things, for example, I, if, if the claim here was about breastfeeding, there it's, it seems to me a very obvious disadvantage to a woman because that means if, if she can't breastfeed in, in public, so to speak, then that, may, that would restrict you know, her ability to, to sort of bring, her chi uh, up, bring, her, bring up her child, perhaps interfere with her ability to work, all that kind of stuff. I can certainly see that. But if you take that out of it, if you say, if you assume that that, because uh, I think there's a state statute that says that's okay. Mm -hmm. So if you take that out of it, then what, give me some practical disadvantage that happens to a woman because of this. The disadvantage specifically in this case is that they were prohibited from being on the beach, which I would suggest is a public accommodation and falls under law against discrimination. Well, they were prohibited from being on the, uh, they were prohibited from being on the beach only if they didn't cover up. Correct, but men were allowed to be on okay, the beach. Okay, so if again, what's the practical, in other words, all right, so I'm a woman and I have to cover up to go on the beach. What's the practical disadvantage to me of that? I would suggest it's a right of act, equal access, and that's what the law against discrimination is, is protecting. That's what our equal protection is. Well, isn't protecting. it really more sort of a life, uh, in other words, uh, uh, your clients have a view of the way the world should be that is kind of different than the statute says. I mean, if, what about, suppose, couldn't they just as easily argue, you know, I, we should be able to be completely naked on the beach. And that's, that, that's, that's our view is that wearing clothes is not, you know, is not something that should be required or just socially acceptable. And that's different because it, the statute, the New Hampshire law prohibits nudity. So equally to men and female in regards to genitals. So that wouldn't come up. If I would suggest if the state were also distinguishing there, that would also run afoul of the equal protection violation. So I would suggest the equal protection is certainly triggered. And because New Hampshire in our constitution, this court has expressly held that it applies the strict scrutiny standard. Is this that, a facial or an as applied challenge? It, I think it both. So on the surface, the statute clearly says it applies only to females. And the testimony at the lower court was that they arrested them because they were female. They would not arrest the male. So it, it, it's both. I'm, and in regards to the strict scrutiny, I don't know if the state is conceding that they can't meet the elements, but as far as I read their brief, they didn't address all those elements. I suggest that this case cannot meet strict scrutiny. Why wouldn't middle scrutiny apply? 
Yes, so middle scrutiny applies under the federal constitution because the, for federal case law, intermediate, inter, intermediate scrutiny applies for gender or sex. In New Hampshire, this court has consistently, since our equal protection violation amendment to the constitution, always applied strict scrutiny. That is the correct sta standard. Um, interne intermediate scrutiny only applies under federal case law. And so those cases that we cited, um, Two of them were on appeal, um, and the third one, the late um, notice that was given by the state, Tagami, it's my understanding an appeal was requested for the full bank, um, but that was denied. So the other two cases, they, they are presently under appeal. And I suggest th those are close cases under federal law, but here we are dealing with state law, and under state law, they are entitled to strict scrutiny. I suggest the state cannot meet that. It's a very high burden. And the state argues You're saying that we don't have a middle level scrutiny in, in our jurisprudence? We do, but it does not apply to sex and gender. Um, it applies to different things. So First Amendment often will get that. So we do have that. Um, but our, our case laws just does not apply intermediate scrutiny to sex-based discrimination claims. Is Three. this law really sort of oriented to a gender role or ability? as opposed to a physical characteristic? I think it's based on the state is trying to regulate morals. Um, so I don't see any safety or health issue. I know that was mentioned in the ordinance. I, I think that's just. But the prescription in Morales, federal court case, um, Supreme Court, talks about discrimination based on stereotypical gender roles or right. abilities. So to Justice Lynn's point, breastfeeding, arguably gender role. How is this activity yep. sort of pointed at a gender role or ability? Yeah, I think it does go towards gender role. So the, the uh, appellants in this case all have a different reason for being part of the free the nipple movement. But a lot of their argument is women are treated unfairly. Statutes like this promote rape culture in their terms and really show women are subservient, they should be covered up, things like that. So I do believe it does go to a gender role. And both the Morales case you just cited and the prior New Hampshire Supreme Court case dealt with the language, and I always mispronounced it, the anar anachronist, basically saying that the prior, what happened years ago, our society evolves over time. So while certain members of the public might not want to see this and might consider it a moral issue, I suggest that that's not a sufficient justification for an equal protection violation. Would the alleged constitutional infirmities be addressed here if there was a hundred foot strip of the beach that where the women could go topless? I thought about that and my response is that it would fall, fail because it would it really would be akin to separate but equal. Um, so I mean we have we've had a history of that in this country and that U.S. Supreme Court has disavowed that, so that's what I would liken that to. So I think that does go towards the more narrowly tailored approach, though. However, we're at least approaching that. I don't think the state has made any argument of how they narrowly tailored it. They just simply didn't. They broadly did it. They you mentioned earlier in one of your opening remarks that uh, you felt that this level of discrimination was immoral. Uh, is, why isn't this a proper exercise of the community morals under the police power? Right, and so a similar example I would say is if the city of Laconia didn't like gay people and they passed a law saying gay people cannot be on the beach, I don't think the court would hesitate, hopefully, to strike down that. Even if a small percentage or even if a majority of the town agreed with that, that's just not allowed. And specifically in New Hampshire, our law against discrimination expressly deals with this issue. And it says it can't be a compelling state interest. The actually, the opposite is true, that the state has to treat people equally and that it violates the health, morals, and safety of the public to actually discriminate against people. So where the legislature has stepped in, I suggest they have expressly preempted the city of Laconia's argument to make this moral-based distinction that we should be allowed to treat females differently than males because a certain percentage of the population does not treat women or see women equally. How, how was anyone here to know that uh, your clients intended to convey a message? And, and what, what was that message and how would anyone know that? Right, so I'll concede the First Amendment, our argument is the weakest of our four, as we would ask that the court not 
address that unless need be and all the other arguments <clears throat> fail. The issue... Is there anything else you can do to make our job easier? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the issue with that specifically is it, it would only apply to some people and not others. So uh, I could just represent to the court all the appellants do want all women to be treated equally, not ones that are just pre presenting a message. So I do think it can rise to a level of message, but it is a more difficult burden and we wouldn't like to see the really certain people be protected if they are conveying a message where other people. So isn't the, isn't the problem even with, with that? I mean, if you, suppose your, your client's position was cocaine should be legal. It's, there's really no basis. It causes all kinds of problems to make it illegal and just, just, just creates a, make, makes it more expensive, creates a market for it. It shouldn't be legal. They have a, absolutely would have a right to advocate that position, to hold picket, to walk around town with signs and all this. And that. Could they possess cocaine and say, we know we're, we're, we have a First Amendment right to possess cocaine because we're protesting uh, that cocaine should be legal? Would, that, would they have a First Amendment, uh, uh, a valid First Amendment point? I don't think they would. Um, I think so. The conduct, I mean, it really depends on the master. I, I, without looking at it, I would suggest no. The, the prohibition in this case extends to all public places in Laconia, yes. which includes streets and sidewalks and city parks. Uh, you're painting with a very broad brush. Should we paint with such a broad brush if it's not? Uh, if uh, there could be such a prohibition on the beach or not, does that hold for the sidewalk as well? Right, so the case in front of the court is a beach, um, so you certainly could find that a beach is a public accommodation. Actually, just a sidewalk is a public accommodation in that it's a facility open to the public. And if we look at Laconia's specific statute, th their language starts mentioning places of public accommodation. I think they sort of borrowed from that statute in areas they are addressing, they also are addressing private areas if it can be seen from public. I suggest that that's a further problem because it's just completely overbroad. The statute was in no way narrowly tailored, which is a specific requirement under strict scrutiny. Is such narrow tailoring something that preserves time, place, and manner restrictions on adult entertainment? and distinctions between male and female entertainers. Right, so it's my understanding the time, place, manner applies to the First Amendment, not so much the equal protection grounds. Right. Uh, um, so it, it, the city of Laconia... The ordinances that govern adult entertainment, would they have similar infirmities? If well, the, there were different treatment of male and female entertainers? I think if there were more different treatment based on a protected class, then yes, that would be raising it to the higher level strict scrutiny. Council, your lights on. Thank you. Thank you. You still have your three minutes. Thank you. Good morning. May it please the court. Susan McGinnis for the state of New Hampshire. I would be happy to take questions at any time. Yesterday, I would submitted to the court. Can you respond to the um, issue of this ordinance as applied to young children? I don't believe it would be applied to young children. I agree this ordinance does not exclude young children, but I first have to point out that the defendants never raised that issue in the trial court and never even raised an overbreath challenge or a facial challenge in the trial court. They were only talking about their conduct on the beach at the time. So I think the court has to narrow their discussion to whether these particular defendants' conduct falls within the ordinance. There was, uh, they, uh, clearly the police are not going to arrest young children or their parents who are simply changing their shirts or young children are often topless and I quite frankly cannot often tell whether they are male or female children. Clearly, the intent of the ordinance was to focus on adult women with or women with developed breasts. And the only thing the ordinance... Do you agree that strict scrutiny has to apply to this equal protection challenge? Even I, abs as applied? 
I do not agree to that. Then Sandra H., this court made it clear that although it had stated the test differently than the federal courts had, Sandra H. specifically says, although we've stated it differently, our test is the same as that applied under the federal constitution. And to get to the, my, the late authority I cited was Tom Tagami versus City of Chicago. Judge Lynn will beat you to the punch. He beat me to the punch, yes. I've been working on other briefs. <laughs> no. I found it yesterday. And in that case, the court found that pro promoting traditional mor moral norms and public order are both self-evident and important enough to survive strict scrutiny under the O'Brien test. They were dealing with the First Amendment issue, but they found that the, an ordinance exactly like the one at issue here survived strict scrutiny. So even if this court were to find strict scrutiny applies here, this ordinance survives strict scrutiny. If we were to find that the um, ordinance was unconstitutional as applied to these defendants on the beach, would we have to strike down the statute in regards to other public areas in Laconia? No you wouldn't have to strike it down because it was, a fa it was an as-applied challenge and they were only challenging it being applied to them on the beach based on their conduct, which clearly didn't fall within the First Amendment. There was no way anyone in the public could have known they were protesting. In fact, one of the women wasn't even protesting. She just decided that she wanted to do topless yoga on the beach. And I do think the ordinance is narrowly tailored because the only, as the courts have held repeatedly, including the U.S. Supreme Court, a statute that requires only pasties is narrowly tailored. And that's all this statute requires. It does not require women to wear shirts or tops at all. All they are required to do is cover their nipples themselves. RSA 571, though, um includes the female breasts in prohibited depictions of sexual conduct, would we have to, I mean, would that statute fall under the same analysis? I believe it does. Although it doesn't, it criminalizes, take, there are actually three state statutes that distinguish between male and female breasts, some of which were um, enacted the same year the court decided not to, the legislature, excuse me, decided not to add female breasts to the public indecency statute. But those women, those statutes give women protections that they don't give to men because they define women's nipples as sexual or intimate parts and do not do well, so for males. Isn't it, isn't it, doesn't the statute refer to the breasts of a female as opposed to the nipples? Um, I believe that it said the breasts with less than opaque coverings. I, no, 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 but I, I'm sorry. You referred, I think, in your brief to the, to the sexual assault statutes, and I think those just refer to uh, breasts, don't they? Um, I, I think I, re I believe I referred to the violation of privacy statutes, which distinct. Oh, no, no, you did, but I yeah. thought you referred to the... To the the, the sexual assault statutes also, I thought. Um, I do not believe I did. I could have, possibly, but I don't believe I did. I think the reference might have been 6449, private sexual parts. Yes. Which included uh, yes. the female breast. Pri yes. So one of the arguments for this ordinance is protecting the women. Um, is that an overreach, perhaps, by the Laconia Council, protecting women from themselves? Not from themselves, not so much, but what I, um, I s quoted from a case in, uh, in my brief from like another state where they talked about incidents of sexual assault against women increase, harassment and sexual assault against women increase when women are topless. And therefore, there's a public safety issue involved in order to protect women. It's not in the record here, though, right? It is. I actually quoted the case in my brief. But there's no factual predicate that these ladies were in danger on the beach in Laconia. There weren't, but there are the le the um, Laconia um, board. The board in Laconia actually cited secondary effects, including uh, increased criminal r crime rates where nudity was allowed during Motorcycle Week, if I recall. Or um, there were some references to Motorcycle Week, but it was not intended to cover just Motorcycle Week. I agree that there's, there's increases exponentially during Motorcycle Week 
because there's a lot of encouragement in the, during Motorcycle Week for women to bear their breasts and women, because there are so many people from so many places there, feel freer to do so. Quite frankly, so, oh, if, so if we were persuaded that it was enacted, this ordinance was enacted to deal with issues related to Motorcycle Week, should that affect our analysis? No, it shouldn't affect your analysis because the same considerations apply even outside of Motorcycle Week. And women and men are not similarly situated in these circumstances. If we were to agree with the challenge here, would that mean that if a, if a man was charged with uh, whatever the sexual assault crime is that involves touching the, touching the breasts of a female, he would have an, an equal protection argument basically saying, well, wait a minute, if, if I was a woman and I was charged with touching the breasts of a man, that would not constitute sexual, that would not pr be prescribed by the statute and therefore I can't be charged. Therefore there's an equal protection violation. There could very well, if you accept the argument that men and women are similarly situated when it comes to their breasts, yes, that could be an argument. It would invalidate state statutes that the legislature has put in place that distinguish between male and female breasts. I was struck by the fact that the ordinance prohibits the showing of uh, buttocks, and it would seem to me that that would uh, make all thong bathing suits uh, illegal. Is that, should that be an issue or problem for us? I don't think it's an issue you have to reach in this case. No one's arguing about it, and to my knowledge, no one's ever been arrested for wearing a bathing suit that exposes their buttocks. I mean, Times have changed. This ordinance was put in place in 1998. They may need to revisit it, but that doesn't mean it's unconstitutional. And I need to point out, too, that even if it was unconstitutional, the ordinance specifically says that it's intended to be applied in a only in a constitutional manner. So this court can narrow it to be constitutional. Would that include the possibility of saying that it's constitutional only if there's a 100-foot area of the beach where women could go topless? I don't know that... That would still, I believe... No, I don't think that would solve the problem because still you would be just treating women differently than men by making them go to a particular area of the beach if they want All to All or be. nothing thing. So you got to have every, all the beaches or none of the beaches? Well, there are places in New Hampshire where nude, nudity is, there are camps where nudity is allowed. Quite frankly, before these cases came up, I had no idea that it was legal other places in New Hampshire for women to go topless. I always assumed it wasn't. <laughs> so, But I think the only way to fix the ordinance in a con if it's unconstitutional to distinguish between men and women, is to remove the word female, because that's the only suggestion the defendants made about how to make this constitutional, which would require men to also wear shirts. So discretion in enforcement can't, um, can't preserve the ordinance. In, in some cases, when it comes to children, I believe discretion in enforcement it would solve that problem because, quite frankly, the ordinance that was just upheld in um, City of Chicago, Tagami versus City of Chicago, also didn't exclude young children, to my knowledge. It, so it just isn't applied that way. I know they use the word females instead of women, but it's intended to apply to females who have developed breasts again. But it just it survives strict scrutiny. So, in your opinion. On the First Amendment side of things, we would need to look at each individual and the activity they were engaged in to determine whether it was a protest or an expression such as dancing or yoga. I mean, would, would our analysis change depending on what the person was doing? Um, it would change, yes, because you have to look at whether to, to find that it's conduct. It is not inherent expression. The U.S. Supreme Court has held being nude is not inherently expressive. So it's a regulation of conduct and you have to look at whether the conduct itself is expressive and since it's not inherently expressive you have to look at the circumstances in context. 
And does that turn on subjective intent or objective perception of what's... It what turns on is? objective perception. Would a reasonable person have realized that so, even under the defendant's theory of it, now you have to find that it does convey a message under the old case law. The defendants are arguing that's now changed, whether it has or not. The question they would ask is whether a reasonable person would understand that they were trying to convey a message. And in this case, I don't know how anyone would know they were trying to convey a message, or that maybe they, I would have thought that maybe they just didn't know it's illegal. So would it put them in a constitutionally different position if um, everything had been the same except they also had a sign that said um, it's, it's unconstitutional for women to be required to wear pasties? I think it's still a time, place, and manner restriction, even if it's expressive. If in, and now, in Tagami, they held if you have to have signs to say what you're doing, it's not inherently expressive. And then they found it survived strict scrutiny because the, the, Tagami was actually marching with a group of people. So it was clear there was something going on. There was some sort of message being conveyed. But it's a time, place, and manner restriction. Quite frankly, the ordinance. So where's the time, place, or manner restriction here? It's the manner in which they convey the message. They can hold up signs that say it's illegal to require women to cover their nipples. But have to wear a, sh a shirt or a cover to do so. They would have to wear pasties. Okay. Quite frankly, that's all they have to do. And in some of the cases the defendants cited, the women were in fact wearing coverings and protesting. Tagami, she had opaque paint. She had opaque paint on. Okay, but that wasn't sufficient. That wasn't sufficient. It but it, still would it be sufficient under this ordinance? I don't, be, um, it says a less than opaque covering. I'm not entirely clear what that means, but you have to wear pasties, quite frankly. It, it's the only way that you cover where you can't be seen. That's the purpose, that they cannot be seen. And that's all you have to do. So it's a manner in which you do it. It doesn't lessen the message any. Quite frankly, they could wear pasties that look like nipples under this ordinance. There's no restriction on that. So it is fairly narrowly tailored. Doesn't that move the ordinance into sort of an arbitrary area? I, it, other courts have held that it doesn't. It survives strict scrutiny. I mean, this is a matter of public safety and morals. And what happened here shows that it's safety related because these, there was a really big disturbance on the beach when Ms. Piero was doing yoga on the beach. Well, don't public mores and, and uh, sensibilities evolve over time? And I think one of the briefs points out that back in the 20s, it was illegal in 35 states for men to appear on the beach uh, exposing their upper half. Yes. So uh, should we be stuck uh, with a statute from 20 years ago and our constitutional analysis? I don't know if you're stuck with it, but I think the fact that courts are still upholding these kind of statutes, that the legislature has distinguished between, our legislature has distinguished between men's and women's nipples, and the fact that to date no statute of this kind has been actually struck down. There are some lower just federal court cases that have suggested they might, but all of the higher courts that have dealt with it have upheld these types of statutes. The, 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 the lower court oh. cases, if I am understanding correctly from your opponent's brief, there were two, there's the Colorado case and there's the Missouri case, and I thought that I read somewhere in one of your briefs that the Missouri case ultimately, uh, the injunction was denied. Eventually, is that correct? Or On one of, yes, the two of the, one of the cases they didn't reach the issue. Another case they said they couldn't reach the issue because there was some factual development and it needed to be done. And the third case it was on summary judgment where the city or town had filed for summary judgment and it was denied and there was just a finding that the defendants might be able to succeed on the merits, but they've never actually, those courts have not yet actually addressed whether the ordinances are constitutional. It was on summary judgment and uh, restraining order. Ms. McGinnis, the cases that you're directing us to where these statutes have been upheld, 
there in other states and therefore they don't involve the interpretation of the New Hampshire Constitution, right? No, they don't. But as I said in Sandra H., this court has said that our equal protection analysis is the same as that in federal courts. And even the courts that apply strict scrutiny to these types of um, challenges, equal protection challenges, have upheld these types of statutes and found that there are real differences between men and women and that they survive strict scrutiny. There's nothing further. Thank you, counsel. Mr. Hind. Thank you. This court in Leclerc v. Clare made it very clear we apply the strict scrutiny test when the classif classification involves a suspect class based on sex. It's just, that is just, it's very clear case law in this state because we have the New Hampshire state constitution with an equal protection that applies to sex that the federal does not. Strict scrutiny is the only appropriate um, avenue. In regards to the safety related issue, I think it's interesting to note that to my understanding, look, the city of Laconia is the only place in the state with this ordinance. So there's an annual protest at Hampton Beach. There aren't any safety issues. I suggest the safety issue in this state, or in this case, is because the city of Laconia actually made it a crime. If it weren't a crime and people had concerns, the police should go up to that person and say, what they're doing is perfectly legal. That would be the end of it. It's essentially a heckler's veto, where if I don't like someone's, I disapprove of them morally, I can start threatening them, and then they're the ones who get in trouble. I suggest that, suggest that's just completely inappropriate. In regards to the law against discrimination, we have a strict application of that. There's no balancing test, and there's no exception that applies in this case. So the court doesn't even have to go down the strict scrutiny route if they, don't, if they want to avoid the constitutional issue, because the law against discrimination expressly prohibits this and basically preempts Lakota's ordinance. So New Hampshire is not a home rule state, and this conduct is expressly prohibited under the law against discrimination, particularly particularly where the title and purpose of the chapter says it's an exercise of police power of the state for the protection of public welfare, health, and peace of the people of the state, and that it, the practices of discrimination, uh, including sex, is just not allowed. It threatens their proper privileges. I suggest that's the complete opposite that Laconia is arguing here. So I suggest Laconia is preempted, they're bound by the law against discrimination, and they cannot make this argument. In regards to Takami, I would suggest that the dissent is, is, so it's not binding on the court, it was a 2-1 decision. I would suggest the dissent is persuasive. They deal with the case line of cases where it's dealing with morals. They cite um, Morales, which has already been discussed. And then another case is um, uh, the other Lawrence v. Texas. Um, our obligation is to define the liberty of all, not to mandate our oral, own moral code. So, in regards to, it really comes down to a moral issue. And I, th or but just we shouldn't impose our moral views, should we? Within the, gui within the constraints of the Constitution. So, I think when there's an equal protection violation, if the justification is that some people find it moral, even if a majority of people find it moral, that's just an inappropriate thing. That would really... What about the dichotomy or the, the distinction in the criminal codes about touching the female breast and right. criminalizing that conduct? Yep. So, the difference there is that the victim there is the one that the sex discrimination is upon. So in this case, it was consensual activity, and the state's the one who actually made them the victim. So I suggest that that case is different. It's not in front of the court. Um, if a strict scrutiny were to apply in that case, the state very well could meet that. I so they can get, so in other words, it, but doesn't that, doesn't that create a problem? In other words, you're saying that, it, that you can provide extra protection to a woman as a victim that a man would not be entitled to, but um, that, that's okay, and the man can't say, wait a minute, you know, uh, why aren't I protected? People can touch my breasts and uh, there's no crime, right. but you can't, the flip side doesn't, doesn't work. I think equal protection and strict scrutiny would still be triggered, but I wouldn't be surprised if the state could beat it in that instance, but not this one. Thank you. Thank you, counsel. Case submitted not ours to defend, and I'm not aware of any criminal law in this state where an element of the offense that the state has to prove is related to the sex of the defendant. I think that's just unconstitutional and certainly immoral.
The other two arguments we made is New Hampshire has a law against discrimination. And what that says is that businesses and the government cannot discriminate based on numerous protected classes, one of them being sex. And it prevents the government from prohibiting people in those protected classes from access to a public accommodation. I suggest the beach is a public accommodation. It's run by the city of Konya. It's open to the public, and they want people there. So I suggest they can't discriminate on that grounds. And the final argument is, so New Hampshire is not what's called the home rule state. So what that means is cities and towns can only pass laws that the state legislature gives them authority to pass. And in this case, I suggest the state did not give them authority to pass that. We can look at the fact that New Laconia is the only city in the state with an ordinance that they are enforcing as prohibiting women from being topless in New Hampshire. It is not against New Hampshire law for a woman to appear in public topless. And we're hoping the court ultimately finds that Laconia cannot do this in the manner that they are doing. In terms of the ordinance, you want to struck down, but would you could you live with them you know, amending it or striking down portions of it? I mean, because there was talk about a hundred foot stretch of the beach, there was talk about limiting it to the certain activities or, or requiring inserting language into right. the ordinance. I don't think anyone wants a hundred foot limit either us and it appears the state that also doesn't want that that's basically creating separate but equal i mean that's like if the state said well the black bathrooms are 100 feet down there go use them that that's just offensive um so i i don't want to see the court do that if they were to limit it i'm hoping the court limits the statute and saying it does not apply to female breasts it's just striking that part altogether if the store if the court were to just strike the word female that could address the constitutionality. My concern is that the city of Laconia would just enforce the statute in a discriminatory fashion. So I think if it said no one can be topless, I expect they're only going to arrest females and no one is ever going to cite a man for being topless. Hopefully I would be wrong, but I would expect, given city of Laconia's stance on this issue, that's the way they would go about it. Okay. Do you think that the court was convinced that women are... A protected class in their nudity the same way someone would be a protected class just in their race or in their gender generally? I hope so. So, I mean, sex, it's specifically a protected class under the New Hampshire Constitution. We have a law saying do not discriminate on sex and that people are equal. And in the law against discrimination, it's expressly a protected class. So, in regards to nudity, if the state were to, we have anti-nudity laws on the books in New Hampshire, but they apply fairly to men and women. So it's when we start applying laws to one group of people and not a, another when they're a suspect class, that's where we want to follow the Constitution. We want to follow against the law against discrimination. There's sort of a victim blaming thread that happened there for a while. Do you think the court's going to take that into account at all? Kind of the, you know, does, does the public safety argument blame women for the actions of men? I feel that way. I don't know if the court will address that, but yes, I think if they're saying that people can be upset about this and harass my clients who have done nothing wrong but want to be treated the same as a man, that if they were to allow that line of argument, I could see any sort of discrimination claim. Someone probably doesn't like that group of people. So, I mean, to specifically really... Uh, topical issue is on transgender rights in the state. So we're trying to expand our anti-discrimination law to uh, include transgender people. A significant amount of people do not like transgender people. If a city were to just start discriminating against them because people don't like it, I was just that that's unfair. That's, that's not what we want to accomplish. We shouldn't let people provoke violence by harassing or threatening people who are doing nothing wrong. Do you know the timeline from the issue this time? It varies, um, if I had to guess, probably three to six months. Okay, Mr. Hines, um, obviously we weren't in there. So if you could just go ahead and explain, uh, how do you feel that everything uh, went today as far as uh, being able to, to push your case forward for your clients? I feel it went well. So it's a heavy burden on the state to just come in and say, we're treating women differently. We're in fact criminalizing a certain behavior, only applying it to women. That's a very high burden that the state has to meet. So under our New Hampshire Constitution, you have to treat men and women equally. If there is an ordinance or statute that treats them differently, then strict scrutiny applies. It's the highest scrutiny we have in our entire system, and it's the state's burden, I would suggest, to meet that. I don't think they have met it. There's really no justification, in my mind, for an ordinance like this. I think New Hampshire, we have a law against discrimination that expressly protects sex and gender. It's a suspect class. 
and any time under law against discrimination, there aren't even exceptions to that that would be applicable in this case. So the New Hampshire legislature basically said the opposite of Laconia. They said it's immoral to treat people differently based on sex and morals, or based on sex and gender, and that it it harms everyone's safety, health, and morals when you actually do that. But Laconia thinks the opposite. They think they want to protect people's sensibilities or whatever they want to protect. I would suggest that that's unconstitutional, and the New Hampshire legislature has specifically told Laconia, you cannot do that. I think it's important to note Laconia is the only, to my knowledge, city or place in the state that has on books, presently being enforced, a ordinance that prohibits women from being topless in public. It's legal under state law, and it should be legal throughout the state. So what you're saying is that their their argument doesn't meet the indecent exposure uh, laws. It's different. So our indecent exposure law, it does not prohibit women from being topless. It doesn't prohibit men from being topless in public. It's equal in that round. And yes, if the New Hampshire legislature wanted to adopt a law that prohibited women from being topless, I suggest it would be unconstitutional. I also don't think our present legislature would actually do that because last year this issue came up in a similar case where Guilford had an ordinance that was struck down and the people from Guilford tried to go to the legislature saying, fix this, we want to be able to discriminate and prevent people from being topless in public. The New Hampshire House unanimously killed the two bills dealing with that. So the legislature is not going to allow cities and towns to just prohibit conduct based on the sex of someone. I think it's unconstitutional and certainly immoral. Um, should the uh, prosecution come out victorious, what, what are these women facing right now? Yep, so the sentence was, I believe, a $100 fine, all suspended. So thankfully they're not going to go to jail, but and it's not a criminal offense, but it's a violation level. They had to be subject to arrest, had to go to court, and I think really the biggest damage to them is going forward in that they cannot just act as a man can act. So I think that's really the ultimate sentence that would be punishing them. Uh, how long do you think or you anticipate before there's an actual ruling in this case? If I had to guess, just three to six months based on typical court. Um, the issue is, so there are three somewhat similar issues in other states and federal courts dealing with this that are up on appeal. So the court might want to wait for one of those. I don't know. But New Hampshire, we have a higher standard. So we do not have to follow what the federal court does. The federal court, they just apply less of a standard. And it's not binding on this court anyway. So the court certainly can make a decision anyway. Uh, and forgive me for asking this question because I am also new to uh, New Hampshire. But so does Laconia have a, a, a leg to stand on in sense of like, you know, creating their own laws, their own legal bylaws in regards to this? I mean, where, where does where do you right. draw the line on that? Yeah. So so New Hampshire is not a home rule state. Now, what that means is that cities and towns can only pass laws or ordinances that the state gives them authority to. Now, the state does give additional authorities to cities that they don't give to towns but it's limited. They just do not have complete broad range to pass any law that they want. And one of the arguments is um, there's no what's called enabling statute. So an enabling statute allows the city to pass a law. And those statutes can't run afoul of the Constitution, I suggest this one does. And it really has to be narrowed to what the state has given them the authority to do. Gotcha. Anything else I didn't get a chance to touch upon that you think is important to put out there? I not at this point. Okay. Perfect. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thanks. Uh, stick right there. You're just going to get a quick two shot. Um, so they were arrested back in, what, how long ago was this now? This was like 2016? No, it was last year during oh, this summer. Okay. Oh, okay. So this is, I imagine too, they've been getting some bad um, uh, personally. Now, you probably don't want to be in this life. Well, thankfully, they don't go topless in the winter. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's true. <laughs> if the court makes the decision by summer, everyone would be happy. They can go about their way. I mean, they, they've been topless at Hampton Beach. They typically go sure. to the annual free rally there. And numerous women in New Hampshire attend that rally. There has been no violence whatsoever because yeah. the police there all know they have to allow it. Um, so if people complain, the police are actually going to step in and defend the women. I suggest that that's what Laconia should do. Now, were they at an event? Is that where they were arrested? Or were they just kind of, they were just out? I mean, they, they were they were out on, the, on their own kind of deal. Yeah, uh, for this specific instance, yes, I don't know. Okay, gotcha. Okay, sounds good.
Question for you, Dan. Yes. So uh, I was there at the uh, trial for one of these instance, yes. uh, instances in the past, and what I thought was interesting was the idea that, um, you know, how did the police know for sure they're dealing with a woman? I mean, she has long, the person has long hair, the person appears to have breasts. Does that guarantee that that woman, act, or that that person who appears to be a woman, actually has the appropriate female genitalia? Right. And do the police need to conduct a search on their genitalia to prove it? So I think the police will certainly need probable cause, how they're going about that. I'm guessing they're basing it on someone's hair length or whether they look female. Um, certainly, I think that's potentially an issue, but it didn't arise in this specific case, but I think that's a further problem for people who identify as either non-binary or transgender. So, there was one in the first right, case, yeah, wasn't in the, there? In the case with Guilford, there was um, one of the defendants, rep um, yes, considers herself non-binary, meaning she doesn't consider herself a female. So essentially, that's my words, not hers. Um, so yes, and that came up, and basically the state's response was, your driver's license says you're female, you look like a female, you have presumably breasts, therefore you're female. I, I don't think that's appropriate. Yes, I agree that it's a slippery slope when we start investigating people. I mean, are we gonna do DNA test? What are we gonna to do to determine that? And I think another similar problem is, it was pointed out here, the statute applies to babies, basically. Mm. It applies to women who had double mastectomies. I, mean, I think it's just ridiculous, but it's so overbroad. The state's attorney acted too. as though women without developed breasts wouldn't be enforced upon, but a... They, uh, they might not, but that's not what the law says. Right. So if police are choosing to selectively enforce the law, I think that's a problem in itself that we don't want to allow. Make the law clear, prohibit them from doing it altogether. If a lady or a presumed woman is on the beach and the police approach her with a potential ticket for this and she doesn't tell them or confirm to them that she's a woman, uh, would that be something that they could challenge, or that uh, the defendant could challenge in court? Like, well, how did you know I was a woman? You, you know, you didn't conduct a search of my genitals, so right, prove that. yeah. So the female was not defined in the city ordinance. So how they would define it, I'm guessing the court lacking a different or specific definition by the city would just apply what the court generally considers to be female. But ultimately, even though it's a violation level offense, the rule, criminal rules of evidence apply. And the state had to prove in the criminal case beyond a reasonable doubt that someone is female. Mm -hmm. So in certain circumstances, I expect that would come up as a defense. All right. Thanks for your time. You're welcome. Appreciate it. We'd like to invite you to visit freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com I should be in Keene, New Hampshire with the Free Staters.